What's up, everyone, and welcome down to another episode of The Vault. And as the Bay Area legends turn, we get yet another one on the show. And like I said, I'm going to get many of them as they keep coming. And what I want you guys to do is watch this on your smart TV. Watch it. It looks so much better on your TV, I think, anyway. But let's Good get idea. back to the man who's here. He used to front a band who I hope they come back and we'll talk about that you guys know them you see them sitting here they were called defiance major 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 heavy hitters in the bay area thrash metal scene but he's gone on to other things and he's back with his other things he went on to another band called skin lab so much history so much bay area metal going on welcome to the vault mr steve esquivel thank you brother good uh, to have you it's, a, it's an honor it's awesome. not an honor. It's cool. You're, it's an honor to have you, man. Are you kidding me? You guys ask me all the time, get Defiance on there. Get Laws Rocket on there. Get all the band. I'm getting them. So we just had Mikey in. Yep. Yeah, we just had Mikey, and um, which is great because he was the first part of you know Defiance, and then you came in as they actually, I think they had a, he said they had a singer before, but it wasn't nothing oh, yeah. substantial like... It was with you, but I, I yeah. want to get into that, but I actually want to get into you yourself. Um, where did you grow up in the Bay Area? You grew up in... Uh, I, I grew up... Uh, you remember that commercial, Dublin, Berkeley, San Lorenzo, Cupertino, San Jose? Yeah, because I was uh, Dublin, and nobody <laughs> knew where Dublin was. I, I think I, I, I've conquered all of that. I, I, I grew up in San Jose. Oh, you were in San Jose. Mexican boy. Grew South up boy. Chicano kid. You Good, know, growing yeah. Up. And I, then I eventually got shipped off to South San Francisco. So that's kind of where, is uh, that? That's where it all started. That's where it all started. How old were you when you went there? Uh, I was 13. 13. Had you been influenced Excuse by? Excuse me, I was, I was eight. You were eight when you moved to yes. South City. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and your musical influences, even at eight years old, were your mom and dad's listening to traditional Mexican music in the house, or were they into Jimi Hendrix and Janis Joplin, and or early 70s stuff? I mean, what were you influenced yeah. on first? Uh, I, I'm a Motown baby. Oh, um, yeah. All, I think all, so, everybody is, kind yeah, of. Yeah, Motown, man. But, um, you know, I, I had an interesting uh, childhood. My dad was the saxophone player for a, lot, a few Bay Area bands, Rudy and the Cruisers, um, and um, I, I was basically just my, my mom met him while, while he was practicing. He used to practice in like the early incarnation incarnation of Santana, <clears throat> you know, all the white boys with afros out. In so, fifties music then was what uh, it was. I, you know, I'm not even sure. Oldies, uh, it, it, what they called whatever oldies? they were calling. It was like whatever Santana and like Neil Sean and those dudes were all jamming down in Golden Gate Park. It was whatever that that stuff was. And my dad was a saxophone player, Bobby Hernandez. Um, and back then, it was just a big jam, I guess, down in Golden Gate Park. And my dad eventually joined Rudy and the Cruisers. And so I, I was basically at a station wagon. And, I, you know, back in the day, life was a little easier. Uh, you know, not so crazy leaving kids out in the parking lot while your dad's jamming. You know what I mean? Yeah, hey, I know. I'd be out in the parking that. lot, you know, living the life of a kid you know, outside I used a bar, to, I guess. I used know? to watch bikes. My father was a biker and i wasn't allowed into the bar so was i was like the prospect outside. prospect watch the bikes watch the so bikes. i sat out he'd bring me out a coca-cola can of coca-cola and i'd sit out there and he'd go in through the bar and every hour hour and a half he'd open the door prop us out and do this number and zip back in so that's okay I'm all right did yeah, you get no, to no. hear the music when you oh, were sitting yeah, outside yeah. that's no, great no, i mean really uh it's kind of ironic i mean we're, we're, my mom, we were in an accident. My mom was in the San Jose hospital and uh, my, just happened to be across the street, literally across the street from where my dad and Rudy and the cruisers jammed. So I used to go and play congos. I, I'm originally a drummer. And fun, so we got in this accident and I was, I was a drummer. Got you know, shipped off to San Francisco to live with my, my cousins and my aunt. And my, um, I tried playing drums with my cousin's band. Run to the hills, do, do, do. stop. Symbol crashed me. He's like, You're fired. I'll take you up the hill and show you a 12 year old drummer that will fucking blow you away, dude. And I'm like, Yeah, yeah, right. So your Clive Burt chops were not up to a. Uh, no, I guess no, not. I got fired. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, really? Fired. Wow. You're out of here, Joey. Fucking hand. So this is my kid. You probably, my, my cousin. Uh -huh. You probably know him. Um, 
yeah, so on his paper route, he's like, I'll show you tomorrow on my paper route. Come on out. So we went to a paper route and stood outside this garage, and, you know, the kids opened it up, and it was, it was the early incarnation of Death Angel. So it's Andy Galleon? It's Andy Galleon at, what, maybe maybe I was 10. or he, I don't know. He was younger than I was. I was a little fucking tiny little dude, man. And he was right. This dude blew my oh, fucking ass I, away. No doubt. Anybody that was around in the Bay Area at the time or anybody knows any early Death Angel or Andy Galleon, period, no. Mm-hmm. He's a pounder. He I, knew I he's still ten- remember the song. I still still remember the song and they laugh about it and they're just like you know i remember when i was a kid they're like and when i was small they're like you know it's just so funny because we're small and we just can't imagine you small and or remember those times i'm like yeah i was just the kid in the corner with the eyes odd shirt so know? what was the next step then steve um well, you I, know, mean, I mean, did I, you I, want I, to play in a band as a drummer yeah or? well you know i mean that that shattered my dreams literally i mean boom i was done I was done as a drummer. Couldn't go to day. like a hair metal band and kind of play even easier. No, because you know? I, I went no because there were posers. <coughs> you know, I knew my cousin knew all these cats there. You know, and Death Angel used to cover my cousin's house, and my aunt would feed him, and I'd just sit there and just you know I'd always be in the corner and just watch everybody. And I went home with the tape. I remember asking uh, Rob. I said, "Hey man, can you write me down a list of bands that I should go check out?" And he was like, "Really cool," and like wrote me like a list of bands to go check out. And I I went out and bought I you know I think possessed oh really uh, Megadeth and it was over okay yeah. so yeah. this is your first introduction into metal at this point really so you had met yeah. the Death Angel guys and you're listening my to my cousin was there right so. okay so yeah. earlier but stuff mm-hmm. had you had you hadn't been swayed yet were you a horror movie guy I like to ask that question because to me I was into creature features I don't know I'm 55 so I don't know how far behind. Mm-hmm. Me, you are, but you know that was a big thing in this. And to me, a lot of the metal fans are horror fans, and I think that kind of went hand in hand with me. Did it go hand in hand with you? I mean, you know, was I, it a big thing for you, or could you take it or leave it? Uh, I wasn't allowed to stay up that late. I'm a little younger, 49, um, and, just a little. <laughs> but so, but my dad was into like you know, um, really into the Three Stooges, you know, and stuff like Love that. Them. I mean, Little Rascals, I was Little Rascals, great. I mean, dude. That, Laurel and Hardy, Abbott and Costello. When life was easy, man. You know, I could still yes. remember that smell. Yes. You know, and it's like the only thing you had to worry about was a whooping, you know. And, right. Which, yes. Which right. were easily served. Yes. But easily served. And nobody gave a shit at nobody, that time. Nobody. Now cared. there would be lawsuits and the police and child protective service. You'd be my in a foster home. I don't even and, know what a spanking yeah, they, feels oh, like. Mine either. Come on. I, my, my adults, you mean? My adults <laughs> yeah. don't know what a spanking ever was. Just with daddy yelling. Yeah. So then you, um, did you ever play drums in a band? And, or even though that killed it, it, did you ever play drums in a I, band? I did. You know, we, 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 we had a little thing, you know, called an Inquisitor. Hot the um, Inquisitor. The Inquisitor. And, of course. Uh, we played S.O.D., um, one, one S.O.D. song, and that was it. Okay, so when did we go, you know... I don't know if the drumsticks are for me, you know, but damn, the mic. I I, I, I kind of like that mic thing, you know what I mean? When did that come? Because that's, I, I've tried to explain this to many people. When you tell somebody you're a drummer, then you've probably practiced the drums. When you tell somebody you're a piano player or a guitar player, you have probably pla- practiced. When you tell somebody you're a singer, the whole room goes, bah! Sure you are. Yeah. You, oh no. You're. Yeah. I bet. I bet. God, really. I. I know this. It's probably the most intimidating. I'm a singer. I can do this. Yeah. I'm a rock singer. <laughs> what makes you a rock singer, Zetro? You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, honestly, right? And yeah. w- did you feel that as well, Steve? I mean, yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah, it's like I'm going to sure. be a singer now. Oh, you are. Uh, and cr- and what gives you the fucking credential <laughs> to be able to? think that you can sing in a band yeah. because if you can play guitar you can play guitar like i said right, if you can right. play an instrument mm-hmm. you can do it mm-hmm. and singing is like technique and your own sound and how if you can carry voice and had and being able to remember lyrics just there's a lot of mechanics to it that people don't keeping your voice after a 32 date in a road tour i mean there's a lot yeah. of different things you learn later on in life i'll say the lsd comes first <laughs> 
if you, you, can, you, you have to have it in order to be able to be a singer because we're just we we are a little deranged. You I, know? I, I I did it when I was fourteen to, <laughs> I think eighteen. Very much. Last time I did a hit of acid was uh, ACDC Shoreline in '88. I did a hit. Oh man, it was the best day. I'm talking about ever. lead singer disease. No, well, I don't. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about lead singer disease, bro. I'm talking about LSD. Circle One's a whole another story. Lead I'm D. with you there, bro. We can have a whole conversation about this. Oh my. Um, <laughs> oh no, golly. I just think. Uh, so, no, but so I mean, I'm just saying LSD uh, lead singer disease is like you. Uh, well, like we were saying, man, you were one of my first shows. And, and to say what got me started, Marco Segueta got me started. I seen that fucking dude, pretty as a fucking bumblebee, just fucking floating on stage. And I was like, oh, my God. I think it was his 19th, 18th birthday, something yeah, like that. Yeah, but by then he, he was a seasoned And vet. he had this fucking big old blonde chick right next to him. And he's like, come on, babe, let's go. I was I like, bet he did. what? And then I seen the singer of Pizet, Jet Becerra. Come walking down this alleyway at the same gig in Mabuhay Gardens, and he's coming down that alley. I love that alley. And he had this fucking black trench coat on with boots, and his hair was fucking flying. And I was just like, "Now I'm in an Izod shirt, right? Fucking with my cousin in a Death Angel show." I was just like, "Oh my god, who the fuck is that?" And my cousin's like, "Oh, that's possessed." I was just like, "Oh." That's wild. Yeah, I was that like, "Holy wild. shit!" That is how what intimidating. I want to do right there. That that okay. So, what year are we talking about? I think we're talking. Uh, would I be wrong? I mean, just maybe like this is Death Angel, Ulysses, Siren, Sacrilege at the at the uh, something like that. Six something like that. You know, uh, um, Mabuhe Gardens. I remember right. this lady. Yeah. Um, fucking, she was really mean to all the band. Yeah, and uh, the little Chinese lady, fucking massive. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She used to yell at us all. Yeah, um, you know, I remember fucking the Lake of Fire, Manny. You know, there's a lot of Lake of Fire, and I was like, holy yeah. shit! So that's where it all started. Um, definitely. And then, you know, I, I like I said, I, I I was able to get enough money to jump on and find my way to San Francisco to the Stone, and I've seen you guys play uh, Exodus. Uh, what was the band I said? Um, God damn it, Agent Steel. I can't. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember that. It was just an amazing show. A lot show. of those days we don't remember. Um, but and just like that show, time at the Mab, this dude found me, picked me out of the crowd. Maybe it's just because I was big, or maybe he just remembered me. And he's like, "You come here," and he jumped on my shoulder. And what I now he was, turned out to be a guy so named Toby Rage. And the, was it the, the same? It was. It was the same guy. He did the same thing at the Mabuhe Garden right. show. With my eyes, I'd shirt on again, right? This time, I didn't wear my eyes at show, the Exodus show, but he found me, got on my shoulders, and started fucking kicking people with the. I looked, he had these fucking motorcycle boots, uh, something I've never seen since, and walking across people's heads at the Exodus yeah, that's show. That's what Toby did. It was yeah. just insane. It was just insane. You better be looking up. That's all I can say. Yeah, absolutely. So, you, better be you were a up. huge influence on me. I mean, and that was Thank you. just to be here and to actually be playing music and. It's just something that's been in my blood, and it's just fun. When what was Defiance wasn't your first band as a vocalist, no, was it? No, what, my what first was band you? was called Exanthus from San Jose. Uh, we were, uh, yeah. And what year Got was that? Mike Beard, or, uh, Eric Beard Eric, from Great, uh, yeah. Great. I love Eric. Oh yeah, yeah. He could have been a baseball player. star, but uh, we're really? like, dude. Oh, weird yeah. enough, we're open. We're opening up for Exodus. You can't play this show. It's either you play this show or you fucking you're fired. He's he, he could have been a baseball star this day. He chose to come play the show. And the fucking promoter lied about Exodus playing. It was never, you guys never came and my band got to play. And it was actually really good. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Eric's a great talent. So you got a great, play with a great guitar yeah, player. Yeah, started pretty young. Uh, how long did that band go, Steve? Uh, for, for a few years. Yeah. Until I got kicked out of my own band. But it's okay. It's all right. My kids kicked me out of hatred. That'll be a whole other episode we'll talk about. It's the truth. I, nobody, well, some people do. Okay. Oh, Exodus guys rip my ass on yeah. that all the time because yeah, yeah. they know the story and stuff. It was just, right as soon after I got out of, got back into Exodus. Like I said, I'll tell that story. Well, I don't see him so, here, so you must have kicked him out of, of, kicked him out of well, the house. Well, no, they don't. They're, they're on, they've been on their own for, I haven't had any of my own children here 
you know, with me for a long time. Yeah, they, they've been out there. They all do. Mine are very. That's the way to go, people. Mine are ready make to sure they the listen bus. to metal and make sure that they get that they get out of the nest and they learn how to fly. Yeah, out of the nest for money, it's great. I'm doing well. The boys are doing real well. There it is, right there. The new awesome. The new Hat Right record. Yeah, came out. <laughs> we say Hat Right. Yeah. New Hat Right album came out. So they're kicking ass. No, they're doing real good. So. Did you demo with Xanthus? Yeah, there's a couple of demos. Actually. Really? Yeah, it's actually uh, some some cat who's putting out all, all the demos. And, like, so rec, if somebody rec wanted to watch this and they saw it and they were interested, where would do you know where they, they could go I, get I, it? Like I was saying, it's about to be released. Um, oh, some, really? Yeah, some cat just reached out. He's uh, he released a new re he released Wrecking Machines demos. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my Which god! Is an awesome Wrecking Machine, you know. So um, and that that was a little. I saw the black shirt with the big green Wrecking Machine on the front. Yeah, yeah those guys. I got a were couple. Just of, yeah, amazing. I mean that's where we got Scott. That's what know? I'm saying. Well, exactly, and that's why I mean, and I mean, I'll get people in to talk about. I'm going to the deepest, darkest parts of the Bay Area to bring you guys all in the vault, to, so we can cool. tell everybody. Awesome. The story, you know, how how it was. People are so very fascinated by the scene that we were all Absolutely. very much a part of. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with all the other stupid shows that I do, I do a bunch of other things, but most of the meat and potatoes is to bring guys like him on and to let him tell us, you know, how it started, how it came out, how we came. Now, how long did you go with Xanthus before? I mean, how long did you carry that? Uh, we went... We went pretty hard for uh you know about three or f three or four years and, and they kept going after me they had they got some uh strong guys you know um henry the the guy who he and i started the band when we were kids um he went on to a magica and he's uh, doing quite well in the fiber optics or electronic industry now Good. so he yeah he was one of the smart guys but um yeah man it was we we rocked, you know. I mean, we were just we heard that forbidden evil twisted, you know, um, forbidden evil. Yeah, great. And that, that, I mean, we all had a band meeting for it, you know, and that was, uh, you know, that was the carrot we were chasing, you know what I mean? And it was a uh, very, you know, it was right after the big. I, I came after, you know, after the huge scene, you know. Kind of that. Um, there was always a, there was this, the big initial wave, but then there was many. Big aftershocks that came after. Yeah, little, you know little I mean? guys. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would sure. say big aftershocks because if you looked at other cities in the world, nobody spawned them 15 deep. I could sit here right now and go 15 deep with our scene. There wasn't one in the world, not even in any type of hair metal or power metal ever. That's why the Barry is so, yeah, you know, still coming, so man. revered, I guess, yeah, is yeah. because, you know, it's, it's like us, uh, Metallica. Testament, Death Angel, uh, the possess, possessed, uh, violence, <laughs> forbidden, <going. laughs> defiance, of Bordred, uh, I, I mean, yeah. I know, Hellhound, Wrecking Hellhound. Music, you oh. know what I mean? I mean, exactly. I mean, I, I can pull them out from my ass wow. as many as there is, you know what I mean? Fucking yeah. Blind Illusion, we're going to just, uh, so yeah. many bands, so. And I and, got to watch all those bands, bands from you know the outside. I mean? I, like I, I wasn't um, in Defiance. Like I wasn't the first singer. They had they actually no, they had did. a singer, but he, uh, Pro, uh, Product of Society, right? Um, that was out before me. So you you asked if they had a guy for a little bit of time, but he was actually on the first album. And and it, you know what? I really like that record. It, it, it it's, it's a, a great record. It's an, a very interesting record. John, uh, Jeff Waters produced it. Yes, he did. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he they had you know a. a good grasp on what every the, both the guys were trying to do so, you know something got i think everyone knows something got lost in translation and to hear that record well like, mike said if you take nowadays, it out of the bay area it ain't going to be the bay area you, you know go. what i mean so it's kind of like sometimes but you don't take it out you just yeah, keep yeah. it here mm -hmm. something in the water bro something in the water well when did you get the when did you get the call that you know that they were going in in another direction and 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 because you know they were like you said, the second way they were, you know, they had people. Road some, yeah, they They're were. They, the, they uh, had some money. Damn, damn right. Mm -hmm. They they had some uh, gas in the tank. Well, to be honest, I, you know, I I had heard Defiance on the radio, and um, when I was in Exanthus, and I was, you know, I was I was homeless, <laughs> you know, throughout many of those years, and I, I heard it, and I was like, man, I got to make a choice, and I heard that this band called Laughing Dead was looking for a singer. Mm -hmm. 
And if I could, I Eric yeah, because you had a stunt. Yeah, yeah, Eric. Eric imported me. That was yeah, Rob Robbie's roommate. Eric, remember he lived with Robbie Rob, from yeah, Exodus. Absolutely. He lived with Robbie. I, yeah, absolutely. Yes, he did. And, We're all uh, ancestrally tied to each other, unbelievably. Uh, you know, it's, it's, and, and so much. I mean, and, and, I mean, and really deep. Here I come in, just like you know, this yeah. kind of latching onto this tail yeah. end of some thing. I mean, because it was just so weird. I so I joined Laughing Dead, and um, it, it was it was going all right man I, and i mean it was really a gig that i couldn't handle vocally the, the singer the drummer wrote the vocals and I, I i really couldn't just i couldn't sing it man i could sing my shit you know uh -huh. and it, so yeah the, so i got the opportunity to ace cook uh you know started courting me and taking me out for long evenings and you know we just i work with ace with my uh and, My uh, ACDC tribute man. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, a, he's, he is a man. Ace he is, is a we're going to do a whole episode with Ace. Um, so he basically was like, "Hey, man, the guys kind of like what you're doing over there. Would, would you be interested?" And in, you know, I'm, I'm a businessman. I hear you. This, what this year was this about, do. Steve? When, when, oh, what, can you remember? Yeah, I think it was '89, uh, right when their record was about to be released. Unfortunately, I joined the band the day after their record release show. Uh -huh. Which was kind of a shady deal that all kind of went down. It's you know kind of tough, I guess, for those guys to sure. let the cat know, you know. Um, but to this day, I really like I, I, you know, I mean, I like what I did, you know. I, I listen to it now, it's cute and kooky, you know. I listen to my voice all freaking. Oh God, if I listen, to, you know. Well, I, I, but, uh, that's all of us. That's anything. Right. Listen to the legacy right. demo and listen to me now. Totally, you know I mean? totally, totally, totally. It was good. Well, I guess it was good. Sounded good to me then. <laughs> Right, we were kicking ass then, right? This yeah, is metal. This yeah. is badass. Yeah, I like, know. Who, who gave me the helium? Where'd yeah, that exactly. Shit come from? Whatever. Yeah, you know. But he had a unique voice uh, and props out to Ken Elkington. I don't think he ever got the the the, the props that he deserved. And um, yeah, so a lot here of people, I come in the band, and uh, everyone, you know, here's some fucking little mini Chuck Billy's in town. You know what I mean? That and, was the first rap I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was my it fucking was, whole career. Definitely, you know? Yeah, and, I guess uh, it was kind of fun. You know, I could play with it and everything. Ironically, I never got to meet the dude until later on, and it kind of kept me from even enjoying Testament as much as uh -huh. I do now, uh -huh. um, uh, because the similarities kind of parted ways like as soon as I started Skin Lab, uh -huh. and uh, it was pretty easy just to kind of separate everything. And I think we were both like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> you know, right? Instead of like, uh, "What's like up?" Like looking kid? in a mirror what's or something up, kid? like that. Fucking biting on yeah, my right. shoes, like I can't yeah, help you know it. What? Like, I, you know what? Chuck's not like that at all. He's never been like that. So maybe that was totally. The, you, you know your preconceived uh, you, you notion know. of what it could possibly be. Well, it wasn't be. me. It was the hey, scene. But, uh, I mean, the uh, fucking uh, magazines. Well, you know. I mean, uh, fucking dude. Every, every, the, we were monsters. Brass, they they made everyone. us like monsters. My yeah, manager, you know. fucking who managed the skin lab, the first thing he said was, "What's up, Chuck?" I'm like, you know, whatever. It's a it, it's a fun thing, and it, we had we had fun. With it. I don't right. Know. It is. Um, fun. But I never used a half mic stand, fuckers. So, uh, uh, well, I never used a stick mic stand either. <laughs> yeah, no, they tried to peg me for it, I but can't, I, 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 I never have. I, I, I can't have something in my hand other than the mic. I j and I don't use a mic stand. Anytime I, when I, when I, what, no, I don't even like in-ears. <laughs> I tried those for one time. I tried for one tour. And it was the hardest thing ever. I couldn't hear the crowd. And then I got a bubble of sweat in between it. Uh, and it was like, rrr, 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 like that. Oh, and I had to pull the, the fucking sweat. thing out. Yeah, 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 and I, I said, you know what? That. I didn't see Bon Scott with no fucking thing mm -hmm. in his ears. Mm -hmm. Give me a goddamn way. I didn't see Deal with that shit in his ears. Use monitors? Uh, just front monitors. Really? I don't like I the don't. in ears. Can't have them. I don't like, I can't use I, monitors either. I need them for vocals. I have to, I want me kick and snare. Yeah. That's what I need. I kicks, me is yeah. oompa, oompa, oompa. Mm -hmm. If I can hear the oompa, 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 I'm in on yeah, every man. time. That's where I, that's how I cue in. Guitars, bass, eh. I can, give it, I can hear them. If I need, I'll scoot up to their amp. Mm -hmm. If if uh, in the monitors, I need me in that front wedge. Like, if I go, pff, it goes, pff, and I need cool. um, kick and snare. But I'm a bit scared of my voice. Really? I just want to hear what they hear. I, I have no problem <laughs> with that. I, yeah. I'm looking for certain intricacies that i'm gonna make sounds mm -hmm. that i make and i want to hear them so cool. i i it's all it's all mechanics i was on I stage the other day dude and fucking killed that shit Hard. it was fun wasn't it it was fucking, it was fucking so fun. fun i had a smile on my right. face the well whole, I, that's where i the seen whole in my night i mean exodus so had to play um 
Comic Con. Well, actually, House of Blues in San Diego for Comic Con. And I look over, and he's on the side of the stage, banging his head. And I think at one point I stopped, and I was like, I need to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. You know, like yeah. I had to do my show. Yeah, kind I was of, looking know, at him like, 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 like they're looking at me. I'm like me. I need to talk. To you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So yeah. you did your next. You did the next album with Defiance, but that was it, right? I did two records. I did two yeah, more. Void Terra Firma and Beyond Recognition. And and what year did Void Terra Firma come out? Uh, 80, uh, 90. Uh, 90. Yeah, yeah. So Maybe within a year, more. that Products of Society was released, because I believe it was Pro- Yeah, it, was it happened pretty fast. We, we jumped in the studio. Uh-huh. Pretty, there was no touring. I mean, we didn't, we didn't know how to tour. Yeah, so no, neither no did record. we. Yeah. We thought we did. Yeah, we um, lost more money at that time. We were dumbasses. Yeah, <laughs> but we were having a blast. Yeah, regardless of it, I'm we, starting to learn now. Like, wow, well, where was all this money that we're making? Exactly. I mean, what the fuck? That, you know, I say the same mm-hmm. fucking thing. And you know, back when I got into Texas, we were headlining three, four thousand. Yeah, yeah. It was sold out every night for like the first five years. Where did all that money go? You know what I mean? I didn't care. But, but there's, there's. It's a party? Yeah. You mean there's blow and weed and girls and we're going to have a good time tonight? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What night is it? I don't know. It's Friday night because when you're on yeah, tour, yeah. every yeah, night's Friday, Friday night. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's kind of like, wow, who gives a yeah. fuck? Then you get older and go, but what happened to all the money? You know all what I mean? Like, everybody, all these exactly. handshakes. Everybody, exactly. aren't adding up to fucking yeah, money. Yeah, that's one you know? thing. I was like, wait a minute. Merch booth was full the fuck's going on around here so now we i think as we've gotten older i know at least we have uh, most of the bands have i you know testament and death angel you know bands that i'm friends with everybody's learned how to do their business in the seems business like now it, seems you know, like, seems like everybody knows how to how to how to you know make this make this work for everyone you awesome, know what i mean and, and it's a great thing because it's good for the fans you know that we can continue doing this because we've you know made made it work for us everybody and that well, goes with too, the fans. We, we get to watch yeah. you, you know. Yeah, I but mean, that's as, my as point. It goes with the fans. So. The fans are yeah. helping along by coming and supporting it when we play. So as long as they do that, we'll keep doing it because you know none of us are in this financial situation. Yeah. We can go, oh, well, we're done. And and I don't want to, I, and I don't think you do either. And that's why no. you've been back. So after the second record. Which was what ninety one, the second record with with uh, yeah. Uh, so Void Terra Firma was Defiance's second record. That was uh, yeah. But then so ninety two, the third record, Beyond third Recognition record. came out. Second record uh, with you. Uh, second record with me. Um, yeah, well, you know, Pantera had come out. Game has changed. Game had to know. believe me. We um, watched the change. They opened for us in Suicidal when the Cowboys. That was that was. That I that was, was that was, I watched the game change right in front of me, know, bro, and I knew it too. I knew it too. I knew those guys. They, they at first they weren't selling five shirts a night. And we were all man. These guys are going to be. Then they watch what happens here. Watch what happens here. Not a fucking year later, man. They were fucking probably the biggest band of metal at that time. It's kind of cool if you can if you you know I mean it depends that, that that's a compliment, man, and for you guys because uh, look at you now. I mean your fucking sound is. <laughs> more ferocious than ever, you I, know. I, and uh, I think that's as you get older, you get more cantankerous. It was yeah. only going to happen that way, you know what I mean? For Christ's sakes! I mean, we were there, you know. Um, and I know you you hadn't come back yet, but we were there on the lesson of violence, and I, I seen it in Gary's eyes, like like he he's gonna fucking do this. Like there's no, this is it, you know. And, yeah, because I mean, and him just, and I had. In like '94, we were working for a roof company. Me and and yeah. Rick. I mean, we had got out of it completely. We couldn't get a game of jacks, man. And we were in debt with the merchandise company and the label, the capital. We just the the smartest thing was to just dissolve it so that right. they can't they can't come out. And once seven years go by, statute of limitations are over for everything. So and it wasn't until they didn't do that until it was almost seven years. They did another lesson in violence, and then by the time tempo had been too long, but um. When did you um, when did you start Skin Lab, and why did you start Skin Lab? Did you? Ah, uh, well, Defiance. Um, you know, Defiance was a. It had run its course. We were um, a bunch of young, you know, kind of ambitious dudes that didn't really know what to do, um, and I really knew what I wanted to do, and um, just needed to step aside. Thank you.